Right, I've got something new to review. Come and have a look at this. So I've got the Vantru F1 motorcycle dash cam. So we're going to test and try this out. I've had this sent me. This is the Van True Falcon 1 motorcycle dash cam. So we're going to unbox it. We're going to have a look at what's inside it. We're going to fit it to the bike. We'll have a look at the specifications on the website and then we'll try it out on a road test. So inside the box we have Right, what have we got? So inside this box So we've got a mount for one of the cameras We've got the wiring loom. So what I've read on this is it was direct to the battery where the ignition's turned on and the engine's running, the camera's activated and records. When the bike's on stop and the ignition's off, although we've got a battery feed to it, the cameras are not on. But I think what the control unit does is it's got um, a gravity sensor from what I've read. So I think if the bike's knocked or knocked over, whilst parked up, the cameras will activate. So if a car reverses into the bike or something like that, you'll pick up the registration. Right, what else have we got? Some cable ties. Screwdriver, Allen key and some little screws. So inside this box, that fills up the controller. There it is. That's the controller. instruction book a wipe a 
and another couple of looms. These must be well attached to the canvas. What else have we got? Yeah, so these are the cameras. So there's the camera. That's the 1080p camera. So that's the rear facing camera. And this one will be the forward facing camera, yeah, which is the 4K. So the forward facing is 4K. And then last, this must be the controller that sits on the dash of the bike. So I think it's voice control. There we go. So that's everything we get in the box. Right, what I'll do, I'll have a look at the spec. I'll read the spec out on the website just to see what it does. So this is the Vantru F1, the dual 4K and 1080p motorcycle Wi-Fi dash cam. A Sony Starvis sensor, 4K and 1080p cameras. It's waterproof, it's got Wi-Fi built in, it's got GPS, it's got WDR and HDR, and it can take up to a 512 gigabyte memory card. With the Sony Starvis image sensor for the front camera, the F1 captures super clear images during day and night plus the unique wide dynamic range technology, which automatically balance exposure, presenting full protection for your motorbike. F1's rear camera comes with HDR, high dynamic range, multi-exposure technology, which captures maximum image detail in high contrast scenes and corrects exposure levels when the subject is too dark or too bright. The camera can capture the license plate of cars behind clearly, even when their headlights are on full beam. F1 built-in dual band Wi-Fi 2.4 GHz and 5 GHz, allowing you to connect the camera to your Android or Apple phone directly for settings, file viewing and editing. Its superior transmission and stability, collision detection, parking monitoring modes, record video when an impact occurs and presents 24-7 guard to your vehicle whilst parking. Built-in gravity sensor and F1 automatically record and locks videos as soon as it detects a sudden collision while parked or driving to prevent the most important footage from being overwritten. F1 adopts effective IP67 class protection from dust and water. You can easily use it in the rain and any weather conditions. It has a GPS logger equipped with a GPS module. F1 can accurately record the motorcycle's position, latitude and longitude, driving speed and route, which can be viewed on your smartphone or computer. And this is what you get, front camera, rear camera, the control module, a remote control, camera wires, battery cable, a ball mount bracket, instructions and some sticky pads. I've got my van true. I've got the seat off, but what I need to do, I've got that much electrics going on here. I've bought a secondary fuse board, so I can wire everything to that. Because what I've got at the minute, I've got me sat nav, what goes on there. I've then got another USB charger here, which is connected to this feed, which feeds my charger in my tank bag which is there so i've got that supply i've got that supply i've then got my phone mount so i've got my phone charger going in i've got my optimate charger i've got my heated clothing charger i've got a usb socket here if i need to feed anything at the back i've got the sysap tracker fitted I need to fit the van true. I've then also got another TFT screen coming. So I've just got too many connectors coming to the battery. So we're going to put another fuse board in. We're going to wire everything to that. And make a bit more room in here. So I've quickly plugged it in just to try it. And switch it on. 
I've put the rear camera. Hold on. Let me get my torch. I've already got the rear camera in place. There. There's the rear camera. So I've got that there sitting just on top of the brake light. The wire comes through here. And I'm going to probably put that somewhere there at the back or put it next to the Sizak Trapper. The Sizak Tracker, even. Put them two next to each other. Put the fuse board back there. And then just run the wiring through. So I want to get this wired in first. Right. So I've wired in the fuse board. I've rerouted some of the wiring. So I've got my tracker here. Here's my van true unit. I think I'm going to put that unit just there. Then I can start wiring it in. Wiring the controller from the front. And the good thing with the wiring on this, what makes it a lot easier, is every connector is different. So you can't wire it up wrong. So what I've bought is some of this alpha lock so this is the velcro but not your normal velcro that never normally sticks properly this stuff if i can get some out is the hard rigid plastic type so i'm going to stick that down i'm going to stick the van true down stick my tracker down so at least nothing's wobbling about. So once they're stuck down, I can then wire in the bike. There we go. Everything's stuck in place. So all I can do now is that's the power supply off the battery to the van true. So we can plug that in, tuck the cables away. We've got the rear camera. And then I just need to wire in the front camera. And then the controller what sits on the on the bars what's got the microphone in it but at least now nothing's gonna move about i've got plenty more spare connections on there i might put another usb charger in the back so i can feed it into the top box so we've got the bike out today we are gonna i've put it here that's a little controller where you can press record and stop it but i've got to run this wire what goes all the way to the controller i've got to get it underneath here behind all this so i think i need to take this off and this plastic off and then what i'm going to do is with the front camera that's the 4k front camera i'm going to put that under the nose there under the beak so we'll have that one there and then obviously I've got to run that wire all the way back as well. My only concern is there, you don't get a lot of surface area. There's a little 3M sticky pad on that. But it has got that um, screw thread there. And it does come with that. So I suppose I could put that around that crash bar actually. Yeah, I might try that. Right, we'll get the side stripped down. We'll get the cables buried. And then we'll see where we are. So I've found my path where I'm going to do it. So I've took the cable around the back. We're going to come inside here. We're going to go inside this. I've pulled this off. I'm going to come down here. And we're going to go just under here, under the tank. I need to take this bolt out so I can lift the tank and bring the cable out somewhere down the bottom. And I should be able to run the front camera cable the same. So we'll do that. And then I just think we'll then need to coil up the rest of the remaining cable because there's quite a bit of cable. So we are done. We've got both our cables coming through. Control that. So all I've got to do is plug them in. So this is what we've got. We've got rear facing camera. There's the rear facing camera. Comes through the back. Here. 
plugs into the controller. I've then got, there's the front camera. I've got the cable, cable tied here, so if ever it did come off, it would swing. I've got the cable coming on here, runs up inside there. Same with the controller cable, that runs down here. They run inside here, just behind the tank. There. They come out down here, behind the battery, and they both run up there. So the wiring part isn't that hard, because as you said, they're all unique connectors. But the hardest thing with the install is the amount you just probably got to strip your bike, but that obviously all depends on what type, what style of bike you've got. So what we're going to do now, I'm going to cable tie all this up, plug it in, get the seat on, and we'll see what happens. We'll see if it works. Right then, it's done. Memory card's in, seat's back on. All we need to do now is see if it works. So let's turn the ignition on. So it's video recording, Wi-Fi is on, so I can connect it with my phone. Is that camera working? Let's check the back camera. Is that camera working? Right. I think what I might do is I'm going to turn that voice control off. I don't want that talking to me every time. Right, so it's now entering parking mode. So it should power off because the ignition's off. So it comes on and turns off with the switch live when the ignition's on, but it has got a direct connect connection to the battery. Right, now I think I need to have a look at what the sensitivity is. So if I move the bike, this should start recording. Is it going to pick anything up? Oh, there we go. Start video recording. So I'll have a look as well. I think you can change how long this records for. I think at default, I think it's about three minutes. So there you go, someone's knocked my bike over. I've now got your edge. I'm now suing you at three million pound in my bank account. Thank you very much and see if the back one's working. But I think I can stop it myself. Stop recording. Yeah. Wi-Fi on. That's quite good, that is. So what I'm going to do tomorrow, I think it's going to be dry tomorrow, I'm going to pop over to Vic's for coffee in the morning and we'll check out this on the road, see what the footage is like. Right, let's go and test this van true dash cam. So it's recording at the moment, as you can see, because the engine's running. So, let's go and have a look at the footage. So what I could do with this footage, obviously with it being fixed to the bike, I'd imagine, there might be a bit of vibration on the camera especially the one at the front so it's probably not ideal for using it as motor vlogging footage but what I can do is if ever one of my cameras failed and it was a particular part or a scene or something like that and I wanted the footage I suppose I have got the dash cam footage as an emergency backup so it has got its other purposes. And then what I'll do is, once we've tried this out and we get back, we'll go through the app on the phone. Because there's quite a lot of features on there you can actually control the cameras with and what they do. So I'll go through that as well. So we'll just see how this looks now, this footage. And then we'll go through that.
Right, so we're now going to have a look at the app. So let's put the ignition on. Van True app. Here we go. So this is the app. So connect to your device. There we go. It's recording. I'll stop recording. We've got a low battery. So we've got voice activation. We can switch between front and rear camera. We can look at what we've got stored on the SD card. So there's all the video files from today, front and rear. Events, that's where the motion detection is kicked in when I've moved the bike before the ignition has been on so it's recorded that as an event right, let's have a look at the settings right so we can sync the phone time language English Wi-Fi so you can change the Wi-Fi resolution so front and rear you can change what resolution you want the cameras to be. You've got two in one video recording, so I'd imagine that puts the rear as like a little thumbnail up in the corner of the main footage. Loop recording, so I've got it set at three minute intervals. So you can have off, one minute, three minute, five minute. So I've got it set in the middle. Voice alert is off. That's on, I've turned it off, because I don't want, I don't want it announcing every time I put the ignition on, that the cameras are activated. G sensor. So I've got it set as two, so that's any movement of the bike with the ignition off. Actually, what does that go up to? So you can have one, up to five. Exposure. So you can change exposure of the front and rear cameras. Indicator. Ah, oh, that's it. I've just seen the lights have gone off on the remote. Switch it on, you get the lights on the remote. That's fine. WDR. So that's the wide dynamic range. Rotate display. So you can flip the cameras. Yeah, because the rear camera is in its upright position. The front camera is upside down on the beak. So I've had to flip the front camera. Number plate. Ah, so I'd imagine there you type your number plate and that appears on the, the information on the video. It'll show like the date, the time, the uh, GPS coordinates where you were at the time and obviously the license plate to your vehicle. Stamp, so you can date stamp, brand model, number stamp, speed stamp, GPS location. Time lapse, I've got that switched off. Parking mode, I've got collision detection on and I've got it on setting three. low light and night vision parking mode is on battery low voltage i've got it set current voltage 11.86 i've got it set at 12. gps settings gps is on speed units is in miles per hour gps information change the wi-fi password format the sd card time and date stamp device sound that must be the volume warning tone power on sound key sounds file lock sound format reminder sound abnormal stop recording reminder so you can choose those on and off 
50, 60 hertz frequency range, certification information, system information, or reset default settings. So there's quite a lot you can set there on the phone. So if we go to that, let's have a look at a view. Let's pick, let's pick that one. So if I now press AR, please enter the video first and turn on the AR function. Ah, right local so this is i've downloaded this footage there you go it shows me on the map where i was there's me traveling past shenstone you can see the little red arrow moving if i put ar on there you go you can see my speed i'm doing height above sea level and there at the bottom right of the video footage you can see the timestamp the GPS location I've got registration and speed switched off but you can actually record that into the video that's quite a nice feature that is I've got scissors at the bottom right so I can cut part of that video out well I don't want or can delete the footage right okay the power button the top one the red one long press function powers off let's try that yep that's powered off short press function powers on So that's come on and it started recording short press to lock the file so if I'm going along and something happens if I press that once that's locked the file short press again when locking the file captures a picture okay so that's probably what that shutter sound was recording button so that's this one the second one the green one long press after power on hold down for 10 seconds to format the sd card short press function during recording short press to pause the recording let's try that so we've paused it press it again that starts recording that's quite simple and the bottom one is the Bluetooth light that's really it so that's quite simple so that's the app and the button so my overall impression of it I'm happy with it I think it's really good it's nice to have the feature now of it recording so if anything does happen i've got it captured i can press the button when i want to press it to record i've got the function now if the bike's touched or moved that it will record so that's an added feature for me and as i said i've also got the bonus where if something fails with my camera i can always use the footage from the bike as an emergency backup if it was something we needed in a video so i'm quite happy with it i think it's quite good it's definitely something now i've used it and had a play with it it is something i would buy so i would buy one of these for the bike before that i didn't know a lot about these dash cams or the functionality you had with the app the app's quite good at what you can do with it so i'm quite happy with that um yeah i think it's good i think it's really really good i'm happy i'm happy with the install i said it was easy enough to install there was no problems with the wires cables would have quit bit long 
fitting under the seat but i suppose they've got to make the cables long enough for all kinds of you know all the different types of bikes sizes lengths the amount of routing you might have to do on some bikes but you know it won't too bad you just call the cable up put it under the seat that ain't a problem takes a memory card in there i've got a 128 megabyte memory card in there don't take too long to download the footage i'm quite happy with that speed you know a minute just about a minute for 700 meg that ain't too bad i said if i needed the entire day's footage from the the dash cam it'd probably be easy just to take the memory card at the controller but if it's just an incident you need to get from there that's it straight from the mobile phone but yeah i'm happy with it i'm impressed with it it does what i need it to do i've now got an extra layer of security on the bike it might be worth contacting my insurance company to see does this have any effect on the bike but i'm quite impressed with it i really am there we go so that's the van true f1 motorcycle dash cam the falcon one simple to install simple to use a really simple app what's got a lot of information on there you can use and tweak on it so i'm happy with it definitely a thumbs up from me and yes i would buy one although i didn't pay for this one van true did send it me for a review they never asked me to say anything particular they never give me a script they never asked me to mention a particular feature how it works they just said we'll send you the product have a go with it make a video of it and just say what you want to say i'm happy with it Vantru, thank you very much it's probably one of the best products i've had and it's something i'm definitely keeping on the bike see you on the next one Oosh.